friends welcome to the <coughs> second module lectures where this is lecture 9 in which we will discuss about wind loads. In the last lecture we discussed about wave spectra and one of the important source of offshore loads which is wave load. We also said what are the different varieties of loads acting on offshore structures, classification of loads <coughs> where wave loads are predominantly important. Let us talk about wind loads and see what spectra defines wind load and we will do some couple of examples. Then we will talk about the computer code to estimate wind loads. Wind loads actually acts on structures which creates in fact a very complicated fluid dynamics. In general it is very difficult to compute wind forces with higher accuracy. It is a general statement. I will I will reinforce the statement slightly by showing you some theories and examples. Then the question comes what is the most widely used approach to estimate wind forces? The widely used approach <coughs> is based on few observations. Let us say what are they? One, when a stream of air flows with constant velocity, let us use the word speed because wind speed is important, velocity v, then it will generate force on a flat plate of area A. Interestingly, this generates force on the plate when the plate is placed orthogonal that is perpendicular to the flow direction. And this force which is exercised on the plate will be proportional to A V square. Now, the proportionality constant is interestingly independent of area. This is proved by many experimental studies. References can be seen from the list of papers cited in the NPTEL course of this specific syllabus. Having said this, we now say that the wind force exerted on a plate placed orthogonal to the flow direction is determined by estimating something called net wind pressure which I say as P w and w stands for wind small p stands for pressure. So, small p w is half rho a c w v square equation 1 where rho a is mass density of air taken as 1.25 kg per cubic meter and C w is wind pressure coefficient. It is important to note that the mass density of air that is rho a increases due to water spray in this splash zone up to a height of about 20 to 30 meters above the mean sea level. So, it is important that rho a is actually not constant, 
Now, the total wind induced force on a plate is given by capital F w is P w into A. Interestingly, if the plate is placed at an angle theta with respect to the flow direction, then one need to work out the projected area accordingly. For example, if this is my plate, which is normal and this angle is theta and the plate has an area A. If this becomes my wind direction, I need to work out the projected area. Okay. So, one has to really carefully work out the projected area in the flow direction. Having said this, the wind flow coefficient C w is generally determined based on controlled stationary wind flow conditions experimentally. Usually this is done in wind tunnel. It depends on few factors. The foremost important factor is the Reynolds number of the flow usually C w is taken as 0 0.7 to 1.2 for cylindrical members. So, friends natural wind has actually got two components, one is the mean wind component which is a static component, other is the fluctuating gust component. So, gust component actually is generated by turbulence in the flow field. This happens in three spatial directions, but one good news is that in offshore locations it has been observed that the mean wind speed is much greater than the gust component. Having said this, we can now say V of t is V bar plus V of t. So, this is my mean component, this is my gust component. Now, mean component has also have the spatial dependence, but it is assumed that the spatial dependence is only through the vertical coordinates V of t is considered to be homogeneous both in space and time. So, now wind force in offshore structure can be calculated by two, one is F d other is F l, F d is the drag force and F l is called the lift force which actually happens in the direction parallel to the wind flow. this happens in the direction normal to the wind flow. This is given by half rho C d V z square A and this is given by half rho C l 
v z square a, where we already know c d and c l are drag and lift coefficients respectively and a is the area perpendicular to the wind flow direction. So, now wind spectrum is being used is used to calculate the force above water surface which is given by V z is equal to V 10 z by 10 to the power 1 by 7. This is also called as 1 seventh power law because the power is 1 by 7. V z in this equation is the wind speed at elevation z meters above the mean sea level 10 refers to a reference or a datum height which is actually 10 meters above the mean sea level. So, friends it is very simple if you substitute z is equal to 10 here you will see that up to 10 meter wind velocity remains constant. Of course, V 10 is that wind speed at 10 meter above the mean sea level. So, there are some comments about the power law this is called as the power law. Power law is purely empirical, but most widely used and it is validated with actual measurements and found to be in good agreement. So, it is fairly a correct estimate.